Hey guys, it's Nick and welcome to my channel. Here I'll be looking to do regular updates on my Vanguard account performance, but I'd also like to cover other topics around investing, finance and income growth. My reason for setting up this account is threefold. One, I wanted to do something different that would push myself and develop my skill set or something different. Two, I wanted to create the content that I've been looking for on YouTube, primarily ideas and strategies for income growth, which could really get my financial snowball rolling a lot quicker. And then three, I've generally been uninspired by the content I see around personal finance, which tends to focus on living frugally. I'm fully on board with protecting against lifestyle inflation, but there has to be a better way than, say, having to reuse tea bags or cutting back on necessities, in my opinion. My investing journey started in the January of 2018. I was six months into having purchased my first house, which was after a good six years of saving. Without needing to save money anymore for a house, I had free cash flow, which allowed me to do something which I dreamed of doing for years which was start an investment portfolio. Since this day, I've been focused on investing what I can while trying to grow my income from my job in sales or finding other opportunities outside my monthly pay slip. It's been important on this journey that I haven't increased my lifestyle, which would easily eat away the income growth. My inspiration to make this video is on the experiences I've had over the last two years. From discussing what I'm doing personally with my friends and family, I've noticed that the general nervousness around investing. Scarily for me, my two closest friends, one being my brother, another being my best mate, decided to follow what I was doing. This is scary as I am not a financial advisor and I don't hold myself out to be as one. Please see the disclaimer below. Rolling on another two years, I'm aware that from word of mouth alone from these two people, it's now turned into 10 to 15 who have actually chosen the same investment vehicle as me, while all having backgrounds in never investing before. These people are like me, everyday normal people, salespeople, solicitors, insurance brokers, teachers, engineers, supermarket supervisors, even some of their children as well. It's made me sit back and think how many other people are out there that always wanted to take their first step in investing, but have always just held back out of a general lack of knowledge or fear. Do you invest in anything? Stocks? Property? Or do you have cash sat on the side? For me, passive investing was a no-brainer. Bonds were safe, but the returns looked terrible. I've only just turned 30, so I can afford to take the risk. Property looked great, but the reality of needy tenants and the general increase in workload wasn't what I was looking for. I looked at other options like peer-to-peer -peer lending, but all I saw was more risk and more work. And I guess this brought me to stocks. My option was either pick stocks myself or pick ETFs. Even though stock picking is exciting, I've definitely looked at it from the outside, everything I learned showed me that it was more like rocking up to the casino instead of a methodical game of chess. Some do extremely well, but the vast majority underperform the market. There's a quote from a well-known movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, which sums up my mantra on stocks, which goes as, I don't care if you're Warren Buffett or Jimmy Buffett, no one knows if a stock is going to go up, down, sideways or in circles. In short, my strategy is, I'm done when it comes to valuing companies and seeing the future, and I'm sticking with it. If you hold a crystal ball, then congratulations, because I certainly don't have one. This brought me to the question of which investment platform do I use. After looking through several, I landed on Vanguard for several reasons. They're absolutely massive, with over six trillion in global assets. They're the largest provider of mutual funds, and the second largest provider in exchange traded funds. They have a model which focuses on cutting costs to then pass down these cost savings to its clients. As a great example of this, the ongoing charge on my account has dropped from 0.25% to 0.22% out of the blue. I can't say there's anything in my life over the last five, ten years that has dropped in cost, so it's a massive surprise and bonus to me. They have a large selection of ETFs, and indexes so for passive investors like me that was fantastic and then lastly and the most importantly all the reviews that i could find from legitimate customers were really really positive so it was good enough for me after this the only question left was which index or etf do i invest into for me i was looking for a lot, of, a lot of diversity both in terms of geographies and sectors i literally wanted to buy a slice of the global capitalism pie as such i found an etf which tracked the FTSE all world etf which went by the ticker symbol VWRL. The index has made up a lot of interesting companies from around the world. I'm planning on doing a video shortly, which does a deeper dive into this, but I'll save this for next time. This now brings us to the good stuff. Where have I got to after the last three years? And what does the journey look like? So as you can see from here, and probably seen from the screen before, but I currently sit up just short of 49,600 quid. It's not bad, don't get me wrong, but I'm not gonna be able to retire anytime soon. As you can see, it's been a fairly smooth upwards trend, but it's a bit misleading as it's mainly down to the fact that my deposits have had a more significant impact on my portfolio outside of market growth. 
There hasn't been many dips outside of the well-known pandemic at the start of this year. However, this doesn't really show the real story, as you can't really see the swings in profitability underneath it all. What I'll do now is look at the month-by-month -month breakdown and kind of give a bit of an insight on how I've got here. So you can see here, my journey started in January 2018, when I started the account with a bit of a sales bonus and then a modest direct debit of 200 quid. I managed to keep this up for the whole year, which I was really, really pleased with. And then any other bonuses that I had throughout the year, I kind of tipped in also. You can see towards the end of the year, if I just move up the screen here, that actually I was sitting quite nicely at a profit of 134 quid in November, which is actually quite happy with because it was a bit exciting to me at the time that I'd never made money that way before. But I don't know if you can remember back in 2018, there was actually quite a reversal in the market. And I think VWRL went back by about 10, 11%. So all of a sudden I was, I went from a peak being 275 pounds up to being down 732 which is a massive test to me. As a new investor, this is my first kind of swing in the market in a negative way. Luckily at the time, I kept calm and collected, but it was a little test to keep me on my toes, which I'm quite glad about looking back on it. Going into 2019, it was actually probably my biggest year out of the three on reflection. It started with a pay rise towards the end of 2018, which meant I could increase my direct debit. But then, more importantly, the biggest game changer of all was discovering new methods of earning additional income outside my 9-to-5 job. By these two methods alone, I was able to generate an additional 17 to 18 grand in untaxed income. And it's definitely a story that I'll talk about in another video. In terms of how the markets performed, from the depths of being down £732, they swung massively to being up about 2.7k by the end of the year. This was a swing of about 3.4 grand, so definitely a lot more positive than the first year. Towards the end of the year, talking about the additional profits I made, I dumped about 12 grand into the market towards the end of 2019 across December and January 2020. Looking back on this is actually quite a hilarious move based on what happened in the first quarter of 2020. We'll talk about that in a minute. In closing, I was roughly around 30k by the end of the year, which I was really, really happy with. I think 2020 was a massive test for anyone, even if you were in or out of the market. But to add a little bit more onto myself at the time, I just started a new job in that January. We all know too well what happened that year, but to give myself a pat on the back, I stayed invested and kept, kept up with my direct debits, even though all the news was screeching, the end is nigh, get out, get out, get out. Looking back at the last six months, I'm actually, I'm actually amazed how quickly the markets have recovered. This has swung myself from being down over three grand all the way up to a top of being up eight grand, which is an 11 grand swing, which I wasn't expecting to see so quickly. Overall, I'm expecting a little bit of volatility ahead. But to actually sit back and look at it right now, I'm extremely happy with where I've got to. My plan for 2021 is to stay the course, keep up with my direct debits, hold back lifestyle creep, which is easier said than done, and have a strong stomach for the eventual downswings that will come in the market. The only thing I can personally control is how many shares that I can buy throughout the year. I can't say I'm confident where the market's going to be in the next 12 months, but I am extremely bullish in the long term. At this time of year, you'll see many YouTube channels and videos claiming that 2021 is going to be the year that the market finally collapses. I'm not saying it won't. I just want to point out that the same people have been saying the same thing since 2014, since when the market has broadly doubled. Just remember, a broken clock is right twice a day. I'm not sure if I want to do an update on my Vanguard account, either weekly or monthly, but I'll see how it pans out. But I'm definitely interested in doing videos on two things at the moment. One is to do a breakdown of VWRL and kind of look at the details of the ETF. But then secondly, on top of this, I'm thinking of doing a video on ways to increase income because that's primarily what I see lacking on YouTube. I wanted to share my experiences of what I've done so far and what I'm planning on doing in the future as actually half the money that I've put into this account has actually come from outside of my income from my job. Personally, I wish I would share these ideas with me much sooner to benefit me. If you've got any suggestions to be looked at, then please let me know. Finally, thank you for taking your time to watch this video. It is my first one, so I'd appreciate any constructive feedback that you might have. I'd also actually be interested in actually knowing where you are on your investment journey. So if you've got anything to share, then please do so. I guess with all that, have a great day.